So now we are in the room with uh, my father's latest uh, group of paintings, painted shortly before his death in late 1969-1970. And this is a very interesting group of paintings, uh, often referred to as the black and gray paintings for fairly obvious reasons, but all of these paintings have a um, a black uh, expanse on the top of the painting, a gray or lighter expanse on the bottom of the painting. And I, unlike some of the earlier works, we always think of Rothko as having these gently floating rectangles and kind of a field of color. And these paintings are a real departure from that mode uh, in the sense that they have these very uh, sharp borders and simply these two different expanses of color. Um, I think when I first saw these paintings, because I was, it was of course very difficult for me to disconnect these paintings from my father's life and his biography at the time. And at the time I first saw them in his studio in late 1969, I had a feeling that they were somehow a closure in his life. But I think over the years I have really come to see them as a new, new beginning rather than as some ending and I really think that this is a mode that he would have taken in another direction had he lived longer. So um, many uh, people have described these works as perhaps representing moonscapes of course associated with the landing on the moon in 1970 and while I don't know that I see that particular connection I can certainly now see these paintings as a new beginning rather than some sort of somber ending. And, um, you know, that has given me an entirely new view of his late work. One of the greatest misconceptions about uh, my father's very latest group of paintings, the uh, ones he painted just before his death in 1970, is to associate the dark color palette with his mood at the time. And certainly, um, I think uh, the public is well aware, as I was uh, growing up, that he was very depressed at the time, and the immediate reaction is to associate his very dark palette with his mood at the time. And for me, this was very difficult initially, because I certainly had um, uh, the association of the progression to a darker palette with the progression in his depression toward the end of his life. But I really feel uh, that this is a great misinterpretation of his late works. I feel rather at this point that I'm able to step back and gain some perspective over the years since his death, that rather than representing some sort of closure, some sort of um, decline into depression, this dark palette really represents a new departure for him, a new uh, way he was trying to convey his um, his ideas, his philosophy to the public. And uh, what is interesting in learning uh, and reading about my, uh, uh, later in my life, about things my father wrote in the 40s and 50s, for him, many of his bright paintings, he viewed as a reflection of the tragic. So this may, on the other hand, not have been a departure into the more depressive, the more tragic, but rather a departure in the other direction, a way to explore new ways to convey his philosophy to the public. One thing that is also interesting is to see how these paintings may have grown out of some of the more colorful works, but more um, hard-edged works that he did in the very late 1960s uh, following his project for the chapel that he did in Houston, Texas. And in fact, perhaps we can step into the uh, other portion of this room, which shows some of these slightly earlier works. And uh, one can really see the evolution from the floating rectangles that we saw in the 1959 uh, Biennale room to, uh, to these paintings which retain some degree of color but have these much more hard-edged forms. And I believe this was really a um, style that grew out of the chapel paintings that he did for the chapel in Houston which he painted in around 1964-65.
Uh, this was then the next period of evolution, which then uh, evolved into this final black and gray series. Um, interestingly, though, we might want to step into the back, the other room, because one thinks, one associates the end of my father's career only with these very dark paintings, and that, in fact, was not at all the case. There were other things going on at the same time, which were, in fact, very different in feeling. So perhaps we can step around and uh, see a few of those works in the back of the other gallery. into the back of this room where these these are paintings again from the mid 19 uh, late 1950s mid 1960s but we can go into the back of this room and see some very different works which he was doing toward the end of his career So it often comes as a surprise uh, uh, to critics as well as to other viewers of his art that at the same time he was painting this very dark series of paintings that we just saw in the other room, he was also working uh, on this pastel series. Uh, these are actually large works on paper. He was working in pa on paper at this time in a much larger scale than he had worked in the past. But it always comes as a surprise to imagine that he was painting these very um, pastel paintings at the same time he was working on the, the black and gray paintings. And I think that the curator, Oliver Vick, has uh, very ingeniously hung these paintings in juxtaposition to these much earlier works on paper from the mid-1940s. To, to show the comparison between the two, and perhaps he was looking back here to a much earlier mode of the use of color, uh, the use of texture, and much of what we see in these late works on paper may really reflect back to the uh, works on paper with tempera and wash that he did in the mid-1940s. So we see two very as different aspects of his work toward the very end of his career.